Awesome. Well, thanks everybody to to select this uh, this talk. Uh, I am Emmanuel Calvo. I am from Spain. Uh, actually, I'm moving to Argentina, so uh, I'm changing my country right now. Uh, the talk is about Sphinx and Postgres, and maybe it's not something that is usual to hear because, in general, we we hear about the Sphinx uh, related with with MySQL, uh, but actually Sphinx works with Postgres. But we need to recognize that uh, Sphinx has more features with MySQL. I'm working for Palomino DB. It's a company which is based on uh, Las Vegas. Uh, I am operational DBA. We are working with MySQL, Cassandra, Postgres, and other databases. Uh, actually, I'm, I am the Spanish press contact, and I am working with the Argentinian community also. Uh, well, this is my public profile. I need to, to thank to Andrew Vlad, which is one of the guys that are working with us, uh, who helped out with the, the new features of the new Sphinx uh, version, and all the Palomino DB people, obviously. Uh, this is all the service offerings that we are giving on our company. So if you're interested, just don't hesitate to, to make more questions at the end of the talk. OK. Basically, the agenda is very easy. We know we have full text search on the database. Why we should use Sphinx? Somebody of you are using a Sphinx on production right now or development? Uh, well, which is your experience about the Sphinx? What is my experience? Um, one thing we like about it is the flexibility. You can write a query. Very small, pretty small. Yeah. Yeah, I will see some stuff, but yeah, Sphinx has this. One of the features that it has is very small. It's like, it's so simple. Uh, a difference with Solar. Some, uh, maybe you will hear about Solar, and Solar has other more, more, more complex features, but it's. it's no, I, I don't want to say slower, but it's more complex than the Sphinx. Uh, so the main question, OK, this is the news. I will talk about this later. So the goals of the full text search is basically we need to search text more with complex queries on the database. Uh, but you know. We, we can't just do a like with wild cars across one billion rows. It will be a suicide. So we are using full text search for that, which is a technique that has a special index, uh, which contains a, a vector for, uh, that specifies the position of the word. And you can search using that index and look up on, the, on your table. But uh, in addition, uh, you can have more complex queries that, for example, steaming. Uh, for example, you, you want to search about computers, but in your table you have computers, computer, or compute. So you can search, uh, we know, you know, with the root word and across a large data set using an index. Uh, so the real, from that, you, can, you, you want to reduce the I.O. Okay, you're using the index, so you're reducing the I/O instead of making full scans of the table. Uh, does anybody use sometimes a full text search or before? Okay, awesome. Uh, so, in Postgres, we have, you have uh, two options to use uh, full text search: externally using a, another tool, which is a Sphinx, Solar, or internally using the native full text search. Uh, other other stuff that can that um, full text search can do is order the words by relevance. You can put a rank, 
Okay, for example, if you have a text with a title and a body, and you want to search a word, but some articles have some words in the title, you want that those articles be the first in the, in the, in the result set. So you can add ranks also. It's language sensitive because it's based on dictionaries. So it's not the same that you order, that you have an, an index using a, an English a dictionary that using a Spanish dictionary. Uh, obviously, it's faster than regular expression and like operands in general. Okay. Okay, that's the question. Why is Sphinx so? If you have native support on, on Postgres, why we should use a Sphinx? Well, the, the main question of the Sphinx is you are isolating all the full texture queries in other servers. So all those heavy queries that are running in the database, you're just isolating them from the database and put on other nodes. And because Sphinx feeds from data that comes from the database, you can crash a, a Sphinx node and rebuild it without, with just, without sacrificing any data consistency or whatever. You don't care about the consistency of a Sphinx at that point because you can build up a lot of nodes, a replicated nodes with the data coming from the database. So um, one thing I, I will just uh, say before continuing is Sphinx can feed those indexes in real time, okay? You can, if you insert something in the database, can feed the indexes, but it's only for MySQL. In the Postgres case, we are using uh, everything with asynchronous feed, okay? Um, okay, this is a, the general proposals, but basically the only thing that you need to have in mind is all the queries that are running on the Sphinx are not transactional. Okay, so how, I, I will explain how it works on production, but basically all the things that you have in the Sphinx maybe are not in this moment on the database because you will feed the indexes. Uh, for example, you can feed them each five minutes, 10 hours, whatever you want, basically. Uh, as, I will, as I told, the native supports like real-time indexes but basically, we can use it asynchronously too. I don't, I don't have um, too much customers that ask about real-time indexing because if you have a lot of inserts and a really high load, it would be crazy to, to feed you know, the full text search engines with, with data constantly, it would be crazy. Um, so if you want still native support, you have some cases, for example, and tricks. Uh, you can store the text externally. You know you have an option, on, an option and techniques using large objects on the database, on Postgres. So you can have the indexes on the database and have all the text, the raw text, put on the documents on your file system. So you don't fill up the, your database and you have all the documents actually on, on your file system, but you can search using the full text search capabilities of Postgres. Um, then what you can do is, all the way, just store the whole document on the database because you want the integrity of that document and, you know, index that document with the Sphinx, you know, different approach. The main thing of the native support is, um, Try to don't, try not, don't index everything. One of the most common errors of some customers is just, okay, I want to search something, I grab all the data that I have and put all on the indexes. So it's a very, very common mistake. Uh, just be clever how you index the data. Indexes are expensive. Um, the search will be expensive if, expensive if you have a lot of data on the indexes. So select your, your data. For example, set, index the titles, the subtitles, and the most frequency words of an article. Don't, don't just index words that appears just one or two times on a document. Um, 
Um, this is another technique that I will explain later. But basically, Sphinx uses an ID. So you need the, that ID is, uh, should be 64 bits to store in the, on the try system. Um, TC stats is a catalog table that you can query for check your full text search stats. Um, and what about well, this is past URLs. Basically, if you don't use before the, um, the full text search, uh, basically you have a lot of functions on post side that you can, for example, parse and know how Postgres is parsing the words on, on, the, on, on the full text search to convert them for tasty vector. OK, Sphinx. Written on C++, high scalable. Uh, high scalable, basically, you build the, scale, the, the scalability because you just bring data from your database and put up then off nodes. So you are you, you you are building up, you know, the distribution. It's manual. There is no magic in Sphinx. So if you want, for example, uh, you have a big database and you want to, uh, you know, to index one table only, but it's very very big table. So you just grab a node, and index only that table, and then you can grab other nodes to. You know, index all the other tables. The, the scalability is made just manually, so it's very scalable because it's simple. It, you, you just need a configuration file and tell things how to reach the data. But that's it. There is no other magic here. Um, the other things that I have, Sphinx, uh, they has. Some options like you can create snippets or just not only full text search. You can, for example, know which are the most common queries or you know the misspelling database. For example, if you miss, you know, if you make a typo on the on the search, you can just query the misspellings dictionary. So Sphinx will give you all the correct. Um, the, the correct words. Uh, okay, and this is obviously the return data from Postgres. Is the way that we are working now. Um, this is one of the new. The, this is one of the the key features. Uh, the new one, which is uh, the feature that we will talking about at the end, is the failover searches. Um, Basically, Sphinx doesn't manage the failover, which means uh, if your node is broken, uh, Sphinx, it won't make a failover of the node and create another one. No, the only thing that it does is detects the, the failover, or detects that the node is dead, and just doesn't use it. Okay, it's the same with the distribution also. It has an action that basically checks with an interval uh, if the node is alive or not. So basically, it's the only thing that it does, the action. But it's very it has a really, really nice consistency because if you think about it, um, if, you had a, if you have a broken node uh, and you want to query the search and the search try to search on the other node, if it's dead, it will just work with, as a standalone. Um, the same action that works for the mirroring works for the distribution. You can have, for example, several uh, nodes with several chunks. You know, this node has, for example, um, articles from one to one billion, one million. This second node has one billion to two billion. So you can search pointing with to a, to a, to a, to a node. Yeah. No, 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 it's a single search. It's just basically, uh, that's why I, I, I always say, 
you make it manually. If you make a mistake building up the indexes, you're screwed. Because basically, you will, <laughs> you will spread the error across the nodes. Um, so the, the, the main trick of Sphinx is think about it before to do it. And it's not the only thing. But the better thing is you're not touching the data. You're just retrieving data from the database. So you don't break anything if you just make a mistake here. That's the best thing of Sphinx. You are just isolating all this stuff to another node. If you break a node of a Sphinx, you, are just, just, uh, you can just build up a new one. Uh, but the best thing of, of, of this approach is, and the best thing is just always keep the nodes small. Don't, don't have like huge, uh, huge nodes with large data with the Sphinx. It can handle a lot of, of, of data, but um, that's the main idea of a Sphinx, is have a small nodes spread ac across with the same indexes, with the same, with distributed indexes, and, and if some, some node is just, it breaks, you just, you can reveal again the, that node. And the main thing is, when you query the, the database, use, use small queries. Uh, you, you, do, you, you don't grab all the, all the table to the, um, to the Sphinx. You can configure to, to make uh, del uh, deltas um, in incremental uh, indexes, okay? Just uh, for, from, not, not just index from scratch. And you can build up range queries, which means instead of bring a huge resource set to the, to the Sphinx, you, you can just make a query to make by range, you know? Um, each like, thousand documents and bring small pieces from of the of the table just to don't hit the overload of the server. Well what's new in the Sphinx the, this version is not production yet. It's the, the, the last version is dot uh, two two dot three row, which is the last uh, stable version. This is a beta version. Uh, it has some features. The feature that we are looking for right now is um, is the HA uh, support and, and with, uh, for this for high ability. And other thing that maybe is interesting because this thing is being used for uh, for data warehousing when you need to search, for example, you need to know a users uh, that are looking for, I don't know, uh, tables. And you want to, to see those users, what, what are the related searches of that users. For example, in general, the users that are looking for tables are for computers or for just for the living room. So you can build up related searches and push them to the data warehouses. And in the, you, you can offer to the customers Specific things that um, if you will, uh, if you buy a, a table, maybe you want to buy a, for example, other thing. Um, and this one is is related with the B grant indexing also, uh, which is other feature that was added specifically for data warehousing, which uh, which is you can specify what are the most common words that you will face on the document. For example, if you have a site that is related to databases, maybe uh, for sure the most common words will be databases, tables, and schemas, for example. So you want to specify those words here. So it will be, it, it will index different if you just don't say nothing. Um, Okay, and also all other features that are more advanced for. This one. Uh, morphology is when you build up words with uh, the, for example, it's not a synonym. It's different, but basically you can list, um, 
program you can, for example, you say Mac or iMac, for example. So you, you want to build up a morphology that the iMac uh, is the, the I, for example, for the first letter and the second part is like, um, is the product of Apple. So you, you, you can, with the morphology, specify which are the words inside the words. So for example, uh, if you say iMac, you know the I represents, it's just an example. You, you can build everything with that. For example, um, Battleforge, for example. You have a game that called it Battleforge, so you can build up morphology that means uh, if you find this word, it means that you have two words in, inside. So you, when you search, you can search by the internal words that that word has. Like if, you, if you search Mac, we'll search Mac as, as a word and it will find Mac. Or, this, or if you search iMac, we'll find Mac. Because it's the morphology of the word. Is basically it's just a synonym. You, you can build up synonyms, but it's, it's different. Morph the synonyms is just a link. You say that word is that word. Morphology is different. Morphology says if you have a, a long word with that is that have several words inside, you can split those words, the, those yeah those words, um, and search by those words. And the steaming is basically is what I told before. When you have, for example, um, uh, computers, computer, you have the root word is the steaming. So uh, that's why full text search is dictionary based. Because if you search computer in a Spanish dictionary, you won't find anything. Because computer is English. So basically, steaming, what it does is um, if if you if if it found, for example, um, yeah, computers, it will just store in the index computer because it's the steaming world of these computers. But um, yeah, basically, it's, it's that. It is you can see it very easily if you build up a, a Postgres uh, full text search uh, index. Um, I will show some examples now because it's very easy to, to build up. You just convert a, a you just grab a, um, a phrase and convert it to, to TC vector, and you will see the steaming actually. You will see that how it converts each word in the steaming. Uh, how to fit in the uh, Sphinx? Well, this is the MySQL and Postgres are, are the are the main uh, the main options. Are uh, if when you when you install Sphinx with the packages, or you want to, to install the Sphinx with the compilation method, you will see actually that you have those two databases on on the options. Um, MSQL basically you can build up uh, from OB, OBC or or Java connector also, and you can just feed it with the XML also. This not too much science. The main things when you configure Sphinx are where to look at the, for the data. I mean, where you will uh, grab all the data, how to process it. Okay, is what I saw. Uh, is what I told you before. Don't index everything. So you can choose in a Sphinx side which data you want to to index actually. Uh, where to store the index. Another is this is another funny thing. Because actually, you can build up a Sphinx node, and for some reason, you want to build up several instances in the same host. Um, why you should? Why you want to do that? Because, if for example, you made a mistake, you know, building the distribution or building up, for example, the new indexes, you don't need to kill up to kill uh, the the whole instance. You kill. Only the instance that you do that, that you want to um, to kill up. So uh, you can store the index, indexes in several places and have uh, isolated every part of the indexes on your disk instead of have everything on one single database. Database 
uh, it's not a very real database with, but itself, but basically you can um, store in different parts the, the data. Uh, the sections. When you configure these things, you will see that a, a large configuration file. Basically, it has those sections, which is the source, where is the data coming on, uh, the index, how to process the data, the indexer, which is the how many resources I will use to index, and the search, which is the, the daemon itself. So here you can set uh, which ports to use, um, uh, the ports, the logs, the, the PID files, etc. Those are one of the most common full text, full text search extensions that has Sphinx. As you will see, there is not too much difference with the full text search on Postgres. But basically, the most, uh, the most usual are the AND and OR operands, which basically are the most usual. Uh, it's very similar to the regular expressions. Um, you, you can, for example, the other usual um, other usual search is uh, this one, the proximity search, which it's made by tree runs. I don't know if you search, if you heard about the tree runs algorithm, basically. Um, well, things use that that algorithm to 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 search the proximity. Basically, the tree runs take three letters of the word and. Um, it takes all the word in three letters consecutive. So, for example, hello world will be, the first trigram will be H-E-L, the second one will be A-L-L, -L, and then it will compare the proximity using those bunch of, of characters. Um, and the other one, which is the most useful, um, but they're not operant not. But the most common are an or will be most more than enough because usually when you have a, a, a site, you will search about the, the, which words are very similar on it. You don't have very complex queries in the practical. Um, the connection, well, this is interesting. Uh, you can connect to Sphinx using an FBA, probably like every other database. Uh, you can use the Sphinx stored engine for MySQL, which is more interesting. And that's, that's one of the best things that the Sphinx has uh, with, with MySQL. That means you can build up your, your MySQL instance and basically connect to the MySQL and use the tables, the table, the indexes as tables inside the MySQL. So you can just query the tables, the, the indexes that are in the Sphinx, but Join with MySQL tables. It's like an storage engine, like InnoDB or MyISAM. Just you have the. It's like um. It's like no. It's a, a plugin, a storage plugin. It's one of the things that we were uh, hearing on the mailing list that some uh, that I don't remember if it was Josh Berkus or that was talking about um, the plugin storage. But basically, it's related with that. Um, and maybe it's related also with the foreign data directory. Uh, and the other thing is Sphinx SQL. Basically, Sphinx has its own SQL. I don't want to say SQL, but it has a query language. It's very similar to the SQL. You can connect um, to use that language using the MySQL client. Okay, just you, you just install the MySQL client, or if you have it already, you just connect to the Sphinx and just hit uh, these things with, you will see that very similar QL queries. Um, the only difference that we have is uh, this, uh, the source is not a table, it's an index. Uh, and the searches uh, will, be, will be like a full text search without, without the against clause. In MySQL, when you want to search with full text search, you use two operands the match and the against. In this case, you don't use the against, you use the match. And it will match with the hiding columns. I will show you why I said hiding columns. 
uh, those are, yeah. Sorry? Ah, using the process client? No, it doesn't work. Uh, you mean if if you well can be yeah can work I I didn't check it but it, it will be very tricky but basically it can work because uh, the storage engine is like um, is is um, um, you know when you connect to MySQL you 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 when you query a, um, when you query a storage engine it is totally transparent for the user you can query. A table, and, but you don't have any idea which storage engine is using. So yeah, maybe it's working, but it should be very weird to have a Postgres query in a MySQL to query a storage engine which is in a Sphinx. But yeah, it can, it can basically. But the main thing is, is at the end of the press, the keynote. But, that, but that's a good question. Um, uh, I was searching about foreign data wrappers for a Sphinx, and I didn't find them. So it will be nice to to um, to see why. Or maybe we, we can build up a new foreign data wrapper for its things. It's, it's not that complicated because the, the queries are very, the, it's very similar for the MySQL basically foreign data wrapper. So we, we, we can see or build a foreign data wrapper for that. Or in the future, if the plugin storage project comes up, so it will be awesome to have a, um, you know, a plugin Sphinx storage on the, on the Postgres side. Um, ah, the, the main thing I will say, because it's related, but don't forget that Postgres, when made full text search, it used indexes. So you don't see how it's indexed the data. Um, you can store the, the vector of the full text search on the table, but it's not useful. Uh, Sphinx stores everything in indexes. It's not like Postgres that have tables and indexes. It has indexes only. That's the main difference between the Sphinx and between the Postgres, and, or, and between all of the databases. Um, this is what syntax is, syntax is some of the options that you, you can have with the Sphinx, S, Sphinx QL. Uh, you have rank also, but is not here, but for example, you can have the option uh, the order by ranker, which is which means uh, order by rank instead of order um, as it comes. Uh, but basically, it's very similar with with the SQL. Uh, other features, um, shield distance. I never use it, so uh, it's new for this version. I didn't have time to test it. Uh, maybe it's interesting for people that is using Postgres uh, to have a, a Sphinx for, um, you know, to isolate over, uh, overhead on, on the databases. Can just have uh, Shio data on the Sphinx and can use in, on the Sphinx side instead of push data, uh, push queries on the Postgres side. Uh, the range queries, which is basically with the intervals, I think I don't want to say nothing, but at the same time, you will see the interval feature on Postgres. We see the interval feature on Sphinx, but basically, it's cool. Um, the misspelled services. Uh, actually, you you can uh, build up a configuration file. I will show you where you find it on the on the code. But basically, you can build up a configuration only for the misspellings. Uh, but the first thing I, I should say here is you need to have the words and you need to build up the dictionary. Okay, it's not magical also. You need to, um, to have the correct words on the database, the first thing. And then you need to build up the, the dictionary. The, uh, also, you, you can, as I told before, the auto-completion services, you can build up these things to show the most popular queries, uh, like Google, when you put something, it will show you the suggestions. Basically, Sphinx can do that. Related search uh, is being used for for data meaning also. When you is what I told before about the, if you build if you buy something, 
maybe you want to say to the customer, okay, you can buy these things which are related because other users just buy them. Um, okay, the compilation. Why I didn't uh, recommend to, to install it by packages because basically the main package uh, integrates my SQL. So if you want to run the Sphinx but only for passwords and to keep it small, this is the, the only way that you, the, the only way I can, you, you can have a Sphinx with, only, with passwords only support. The only thing, the, the command is very basically the same with, with, other, um, with other software that you compile. The only thing that you need to have in mind is the enable ID 64 option for bigger indexes, for big indexes. Uh, the other lines are very basic, is the, the libraries and the includes. It's the only thing that you need to have in mind, but the rest of the line is the only thing that you, this, um, maybe not mandatory, but because we, we, we work, but for sure recommend it. Um, make install. Then, obviously, if you compile and you didn't import the libraries, import the libraries. And then, okay, for this um, presentation, I use uh, an SQL. Uh, the main the main distribution for Sphinx doesn't come with with uh, uh, compatible Postgres compatible SQL. I build up uh, I build up one so I can show you then uh, uh, the code. But basically, it's the same. It creates some tables with some data, and I test it, and it works with Postgres XE. Everybody knows which is Postgres XE. Um, the the new cluster uh, project. Well, basically, it's a fork for the 9.1, 9 which uh, has the capability to, to have cluster, clustering with the data. Uh, you can build up distributed tables, replication, and all. Basically, it's the same. It's just compiled with using the libraries from the Postgres XE, but it works. This is the best thing. Well, this is the, the best, the basic. Um, Schema. How it works? The application first query the Sphinx. The Sphinx always return IDs. That's the first, the other thing that you need to know. It doesn't return data. I mean, it doesn't return the additional data. When you when you build up a, an, an index um, and you search a word in the index, the Sphinx will return you those columns that are uh, the ID of that data, okay? So if you search about, for example, tables, you will get an ID from its things, nothing more. You, you won't get all the, the phrase of the data. That's why Sphinx, uh, it, is, it is not a database that you can use as main storage. It always been using for, yeah, Sorry? Sorry? Ah, uh, is is the order? Yeah, you can have the rank of of, of the um, of each ID, but you don't have the data. I mean, when you query the Sphinx, Sphinx search the the data, but doesn't return to you the data itself. So what you need to do is, uh, you can return at least one or two columns. For example, for each ID. You, you can have like a related column, which can be the group or whatever, from the data. I will show um, an example there also. But basically, we'll return the ID. If the application uh, needs more data, it will go to the, um, to the database. And if not, it will just use that ID. Yeah? Uh, you can use a single attribute. Yeah, well, basically it's also with, um, you, you can build up with the storage, uh, with the MySQL storage engine also. It automatically will bring back all the data using the, uh, the storage engine. You can build up also. But yeah, that's based for MySQL. But basically the idea is the same. It's, that's why I said 
just avoid to index everything and just keep it simple and small because the Sphinx will is useful just for the most common queries. For example, you need to know if that user exists. So you, you don't want to query the database. You want to query the Sphinx. The Sphinx will return ID, and then with that ID, you can search on the database, whatever you want. But you just imagine how many load you will isolate from the database if you search those simple queries on the Sphinx. You have the uh, table with the, with the users and just search on the Sphinx side. Um, and the indexing side is obviously is just taking, grabbing data from Postgres and pushing them from the indexes. It's, this is the common approach. Is uh, you know the basic, um, the basic schema of how to implement the Sphinx. Um, yeah, you can debug the. Um, you mean for debug purposes? No, no, the Sphinx won't show you by default um, the the line itself, all the data. Uh, you mean like um, the only matching search? But you mean when you you are feeding the indexes? Right, well, uh, yeah, I am. Exactly what you're yeah. Saying. How do I get a summary of what we did with that long process? I don't know if it's suspect, it's manual, it's okay, but mm -hmm. that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, you can build up. You can, if you want, just, or you have the table with several columns, you can, yes. Uh, because you, basically, you manage how to index. In, in fact, you can, Build up an index with several tables. You can join up, have a huge join with a lot of tables and have only one index. It's because when you're feeding the indexes, you're feeding as you want because you're using, I will show the, the configuration now, but basically you're using queries. So Sphinx doesn't care how you are selecting those, 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 that, that data. You will just push in an index. Um, the Sphinx daemon. Okay, uh, the Sphinx daemon is a standalone, always. Um, you can use agents for, you know, failover searches, but no failover purposes itself. When I mean failover searches, I mean you are searching with, um, against an, a, a search, a daemon, and one of the, the nodes just go down, and the daemon only will say, okay, that, that the node is out, and it will continue working with the other nodes. But it doesn't work like a failover itself. So be careful with that. Sphinx is basically standalone. It, the only thing that the, it has as an addition is it has an action, an, an action to, 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 to know where to balance the queries. It's more a balance, a load balancing than, than a failover itself. Um, this is an example how to start it. Basically, you have, I will show the example so we can move. We have only 15 minutes, so. Okay, uh, at this side, I have the Postgres database. I, 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 don't, I don't need right now the 
phosphorus because I won't see anything here. But basically, you will see once you have compiled the, 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 the spins, you will have the binary, the share, the bar, and the ETC. I added data because basically you can, you can create a, a, a folder in whatever you want that it contains the, the, the indexes itself. So um, you just query the data here. You don't you uh, you don't need like build up a cluster with like Postgres. You don't need to start any DB nothing. You just create a folder, and when you configure the things, set push all the indexes on that on, on that folder, and that's it. You you don't need to have to do anything more. Uh, binaries. The primary the primary tools are you will see it's not a huge tool. You have the indexer, which is the the Tool which grabs all the data and push it for to the um, to the indexes. Uh, index tool for can make some some specific tasks. One of the tasks can be, for example, merge indexes. Um, merge indexes is very useful if you have really big indexes, and instead of rebuild all the index from scratch, you can just grab two indexes and merge that in one. It has less I/O and it's faster. Uh, the search command, the search command is like a MySQL or PC, PSQL client tool. You just search against the, the CHD. The CHD is the main daemon. The spell dump is the, um, uh, it's like um, uh, I don't want to say PC dump because it's not that, but basically. Is 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 the tool for for dump all the dictionaries, uh, and the word breaker is basically what in Postgres is um, the TC parser. Okay, it will shows you how to how to break the words, in the themes. Um, okay, and the configuration. It's very basic, this configuration, because it's a test one. The, the, main, the main part is, oh. the, the, main, the main part is this one, which you say, each section of the of the things has a type. Okay, in this case, we are using P, PGSQL, which is the main library to connect. Okay, uh, the other variables are very, you know, self-explaining. Is host, user, password, database, port. Okay, the main SQL query, for example. Um, this is another attribute. I have a table. You will see here that you have the main table that we are we will build up for the index is documents, and we are selecting the ID, the group ID, uh, then the seconds, okay, from the data. You, you can see that this is a normal SQL. You can have here, for example, instead of the of the um, of the pod, you can have you can use whatever you want. In fact, you can just build up. You can cross instead of have the title and the content. You have you can, um, you know, uh, concatenate both columns and make only one if you don't care about the title. Um, for example, this is how I build up the index later. You will see that you have several queries because forget about this one because it's the MySQL, but I keep it in the configuration file to show you how it works in MySQL and how it works in Postgres. Uh, basically, the SQL query is that one. Uh, it, it, don't, it doesn't respect the order, but basically you have several steps. I will show them the, the keynote because it's, it's explicit there. Oh, I quit.
Okay, here it is. Uh, when you're grabbing data from 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 the databases, you have a flow, okay, which is the pre-query. Um, I put here my my SQL, but it's Postgres. Um, every initial setup is here, okay. That's why we set up first the, um, to search the max ID here, because the last run it will be used that table it will be used for the incremental indexes. So when when we made we made the main query, there is two steps: the post query. Okay, then the post query will index itself, and then the post index query. The difference between this one, the post query, and the post index query is the second one will execute once the index the indexer process is done and is correct. So it's better if you need to update anything on the database, do it on this step instead of the other one. Because the post index, the, the post query will just execute once the main query is done. So if you update a table and for any reason the index the, the index search just fails, you have uh, the, the last round table, for example, just with another ID that is not correct. So you will see incremental here. But once I have the, the SQL query, the main query, it will just update that table with the last ID. So um, yeah, no. I, okay, yeah. It will take, this is not the best approach, but it was for, for, a, for a test, it was work. Basically, it takes the max ID of the, of the test documents table. And when it, when it, when it starts to, to, to index again, it will just grab that, the last run table and search against the table since the last ID that I have on the last run. It's very easy. But it, as you can see, it's very manual. It, there is not magic. Sphinx doesn't uh, just guess anything. You need to build up everything. But basically, the main, the main question is, for each table, you need to have a, a, a checkpoint table, which is the table that will contain the last ID uh, processes. Uh, then the, uh, the index test. Uh, here is the most interesting part, because um, then you have, w once you have the data, you need to process it. And here, you will specify the synonyms, the exceptions, the word forms, everything you need to process of the index will be on that side, oh, on that section, sorry. And okay, this is the new feature, which is implemented on the Sphinx.2.1, which is the, the actions. I have two hosts, and you will see that the actions works per index, okay? You don't uh, have the, the agent for across all the indexes. You need to specify which host, which nodes has each index. For example, you can uh, have, for example, three nodes, but the three nodes doesn't have the replicated indexes across all the nodes. You can have only replicated two nodes, and the distribution is different. You specify everything here. Yes, it's a, it's a mess, but you can have it. Um, the indexer section, as I told, which is the the resource usage for the for the for the the indexer process, and the search D, which is the um, which ports you are listening. Okay, is as every other database. Um, Always have a different port. Uh, don't forget to change the PID file. If you need to have several instances in the same node, just don't forget to change the PID file, the logs, the query logs. Uh, the bin log path is 
Sphinx has a pin lock also, like the Maya school, with this, um, and Postgres has the, um, the wall. Sphinx has the pin lock, pin lock, binary lock, and that's it. You just, you can have, or I can build up right now the same I have to search D, for example. I should, <laughs> I should have one only, but OK. Um, those tests. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you, you need to have the, it, it should be like that, yeah. Um, here you can change like this, just to don't push anything weird. We we'll use two, two. Well, this is one thing. The first time you run the things, you will you, you can start the search D because you don't have indexes. So you need to, to first index the data. Mm, okay. Awesome. Um, here we are. Uh, I think this one is the f the failure, the fail one. Uh, it it starts but without nothing, and the second one started after the indexer. But basically, it's that it's like this. It's just a process. And then you can connect to the MySQL, to the sorry, to the Sphinx. Um, for example, like, like this, and here we are. Uh, match America, as you you can see, you can search data like the Sphinx Sphinx QO. Um, ah, and we can see the data on the Postgres side, so you can. See, um, oh, shit. Ah, oh, well, it's okay. Um, for example, I search America. Just as you can see, is uh, case insensitive, so it will return the ID and the other attribute that I I specify on the source. If you remember, I, I when I configured the source uh, in the configuration, one of the attributes was uh, the group ID. So why I return the group ID also? Because maybe if you have a site that you are searching for some product, each product has, has an ID, but also it, belong, it belongs to, for, for, to an area, for example, technology or books or whatever. So you can create your own group ID and search all the related books, for example, not only just uh, the book itself. Um, and as you see that the data here in the, on the Postgres side, you can, I should have another.
but yeah, it's using group by ID here, grouping by by this. Th that has th this table doesn't have any sense. They just put random values, so don't worry. And okay, the range query was I told. Uh, if you want to avoid the large sequential scans, you can use range query, which says okay, uh, which uh, which is the step per each result set. So you can avoid just to bring up one million rows in just one, one step. It's very useful. The delta indexing is what, I, we, we, is what we, we saw before. It's like just indexing with incremental data. Uh, the distributed search is, um, is that one. Uh, the agents are using a protocol to do to, to to, to search if the other if the other actions are uh, are alive, um, there is a value that is HIA strategy. You can say, okay, uh, balance the query uh, in random mode, which is just push whatever you want. Uh, you can have uh, round robin, okay, just using one node per time, and the other one, which is the most interesting is adaptative, which is uh, it will uh, score each node for its uh, availability. So if you have a node that is working very bad because it has a really low, high load average, the rank, the, the score will be lower. So it will use it less. And when the, uh, the node starts to work again better, it will raise the score again. So you will use Sphinx will use that node uh, uh, more than before or according to the load average of the node. And that happens with the mirror indexes. Those are distributed searches, which is different. Um, this is another example. Operation mirrors. This is the example that we saw in the, in the configuration. And the following is a wiper. So I hope today we have the the hacker lunch. So maybe uh, somebody will speak about the foreign data wipers, and maybe if somebody just want to help out with with that, it will be awesome to to have um, a data wiper for for the Sphinx. Um, any questions? Thank you very much, and hope to see you the next days.